I love being the person who's given a problem that doesn't make any sense, turns it into a problem that makes sense, solves it, and provides an enormous amount of value to a company. I went to school at the University of Delaware. Most of my interest back then was actually in mathematics, so I pursued it. I went to Northwestern, I did my PhD there. When I left my PhD work, I worked in material science. Basically, the theme in all of this was that these people are dedicated to solving scientific problems or inquiries. W.L. Gore is, is, they are leading technology innovators. They make a huge range of industrial and medical products, all based on their expertise in very specific materials. You might have heard of some of our stuff. Gore-Tex is a very famous one. Elixir guitar strings. We also actually make Glide dental floss. Their whole claim to fame really is making the best of a product line. So if they make something, it always works, and it works better than what anybody else could make. This is a value company. We were asked to optimize the geometry of our filters so that they can perform better than anybody else's. They can flow more clean fluid through in a given period of time, and they'll catch more garbage. So the characterization of the media is using network theory, and then the fluid flow uh, is done via certain approximations of fluid flow in the geometry. Those approximations come out of solving the Navier-Stokes equations. So the first thing you have to do is identify the physical explanation for what's happening. And then the part that simulates particle capture has to do with the physical interaction between particles and the structure, and that's very complicated too. So if you can imagine, if a particle enters into this network, how does it get caught? So once you've simulated particle and fluid flow through a filter, you want to see where everything falls, right? And you'd like to see in the real material where all the particles land also. And then you'd like to match up what happened in your simulation with what you saw in real life. The geometry is really complicated. So we had to do some additional mathematics just to understand what was inside the images, the pictures we took in our experiments. And once you have a physical explanation, then you translate that hypothesis of what's happening into a calculation. You say, if this is how this works, then I should be able to build a model of the actual product and then simulate what happens based on my physical explanation. The alternative to the modeling is brute force construction of a lot of designs, which is expensive. It takes a lot of associate time. It's also not predictive. So if something doesn't work when you're building it, you you're not sure how to, to guess how the next design will work. Mathematics just brings an enormous amount of, of aid to that inquiry, to the questions that people need to answer to make new, exciting technology.